So we've been on the Hill for a few years doing yeah. the weekend. And people aren't familiar with the Hill. The Hill is the newspaper out of Washington, D.C. Uh, it has a large digital presence and it has a YouTube channel. Right. And part of that is the rising. Right. Were you ever on it? Have you been on it? I have never been on the Hill. Sure never been on there. There we go. I know. See, yeah, this is Walt what Bree this is. is there. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. So Rising is the show on the Hill. It was started, actually, interestingly enough, by Crystal Ball and Buck Sexton. Buck Sexton is kind of a mainstream Republican. So but then he left like amicably and Crystal wanted someone who was not a mainstream Republican. So she had she invited Sagar and Jetty on. So Crystal and Sagar started it, uh, like it really got on the map when Crystal and Sagar started co-hosting it. And the deal with them is that she's on the left, he's on the right, and each of them will say things that are outside of, let's say, the purview or the acceptable lanes of corporate media. Mm -hmm. The Hill, you know, Rising really prided itself on, on letting people talk about stuff that you can't talk about, couldn't talk about in other corporate media. Then they, and so I was a guest, they invited me once and then it, it, I guess we hit it off and it was a good segment. So I turned into a weekly segment and that was three years ago. Then they left, started their own show, Breaking Points, and they mm -hmm. had a new rotating cast of, of hosts. But again, every, every day there's one on the right and one on the left. And so I took off, I mean, when there was that turnover, there were a couple of weeks that I didn't come on the show. And then they asked me back on, on this new iteration of the show. And I, I, you know, restarted. So basically I'd been doing weekly appearances over the course of three years. Mm -hmm. um, then they asked me to do some guest uh, hosting, which was great, guest co-hosting. So I did that uh, four times and I was gonna do it two more times, just actually like I was supposed to do it yet Monday and next Monday. But what happened was the Monday of uh, a couple Mondays ago, it was my fourth time hosting. And when you're a host, you get to do these things called radars, which are yep. basically monologues straight to the camera. And I decided I was going to do a radar and I wanted to do it about um, Rashida Tlaib getting smeared as an anti-Semite, basically, for these comments she made at a Justice for Palestine event. She made virtual remarks and said people are realizing more and more that you can't be progressive and except for on Palestine, you can't be progressive while supporting Israel's apartheid state. Um, she was smeared by the likes of Jonathan Greenblatt from the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, who lied about what she said, totally misrepresented it, said she had, create, had demanded a litmus test for American Jews. She didn't mention American Jews. He was making that up because uh, the ADL often can't actually engage in facts so they have to smear people right that, that's why they're always pretending they're criticizing israel's anti-semitism because they don't want to engage people uh in the actual substance of the argument so he did that with Taleb. um uh, uh, debbie wasserman schultz t tweeted something um jerry nadler tweeted something a bunch of people richie torres of course who does a lot of pink washing for israel and then jake tapper did a segment on it where he did that kind of you know Donald Trump, Fox News esque thing. Some people are saying so. He said some of her Jewish colleagues find her comments anti Semitic. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would defend her and also say because the another thing that Greenblatt said is that Israel's not an apartheid state. And so I decided my monologue was going to be a defense of Tlaib and also laying out the case that Israel is indeed an apartheid state. So I made a video, I wrote the video, I recorded it, I cited, um, because apartheid is actually an international a right. crime, according to international law. Yeah, so, and there's a legal definition for it. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah. So I, um, I made sure to quote the United Nations. I quoted mm -hmm. um, uh, the International Criminal Courts. I quoted, sorry, court. I quoted Israeli law, cited and quoted Beth Selim, which is an Israeli yep. human rights organization. All of these places have said it's apartheid. Then I quoted several Israeli officials, including prime ministers, who have said that Israel is an apartheid state or they warned it would become one. In fact, Yitzhak Rabin, as early as the 70s, warned it would become one. Um, but more recent prime ministers have also said that. Then I quoted Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, and then Naledi Pandor, who is a, um, a South African politician, who said recently at the United Nations General Assembly 
that uh, there's more and more consensus uh, growing around the idea that Israel is an apartheid state. Um, and so I recorded that and um, I left, finished hosting for the day, got a call from a producer who was like, I want you to hear it from me. And she was upset. Like the producers were upset by this. They don't yeah. want this to go down the way it did. She's like, I want you to hear from me that um, we're the higher ups at the Hill or she just said higher ups, uh, saw your, your, your radar and they don't, they aren't going to run it. They don't feel comfortable running it. And I was like, why? And she said, well, I didn't know this, but there's a new policy where we don't, the Hill doesn't do, doesn't run op-eds on Israel, either written or video. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And that's problematic. And I was pushing back and I tried to see if they could run it anyway. And maybe they could have on an opposing voice afterwards, or I could debate someone afterwards, you know, let someone else have the final word, whatever, because I just really wanted to get it out there. Um, and, and, and they, can, can I stop you for a second? Sure, I mean, that was what they said. They, they, yes. they, 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 they said that the Hill has, make sure I get this straight because I've seen this and I was like, they can't, that can't yeah. be what they're saying. But they literally said, we're not gonna run op-eds on Israel, Palestine yeah. anymore. Yeah, they said, the producer said <laughs> that um, I could do that. They were letting people do segments, but not op-ed. So a segment is when I, as a guest, come on. It's what what I would do every week. That's a segment. So just chatting, right, with the hosts. Or a segment can be with when the hosts are just chatting with each other. But they distinguish between a segment and an op-ed. Segment being a discussion, op-ed being straight to cam monologue. So I'm trying to see if they'll release it. I'm going back and forth with the producers and then Wednesday um, and they're hopeful that maybe we'll be able to do something where it's uh, going to be on and then they'll have a, a someone else. I'm like, why don't you have Jonathan Greenblatt on from the ADL? Let him make his case, you know, um, not that I really was excited about that, but I was just trying <laughs> to get it out there. And uh, then I get a call from the um, editor in chief of the Hill who uh, called me and said, we're not going to run the radar. I'm like, okay, why not? And he said, well, you know, we get a lot of pitches that we pass on. No, that's just not true because yeah. as I know from people who host there that there's no editorial process that happens. Um, you as a host, you write your radar, your monologue, you email it to the team and they put it in the teleprompter. That's the only interaction you have with the production team. Right. And, and a number and a number of people who've done that work, like Ryan Grimm right. and, and have, have come forward and said, look, I did. Ryan said, I've did I've done 150 of those right. and never once did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So, right. So Ryan wrote about this. He himself had been a host there and he said, you know, he he said that he, that it never happened to him. So then I knew it was a BS excuse. Right. Then he said it was because it didn't fit into their sweet spot of of coverage <laughs> uh, because it was international not domestic okay one it's domestic because it was about Tlaib. two israel is what was it henry kissinger i believe said foreign policy is domestic policy but i don't yeah. mean to yeah there's to all kinds of henry all kissinger to make my point right there's all, right and the all kinds of things like I that know yeah. as a guest and a host i would constantly talk about international stories in fact the hills producers would throw international story ideas at us yeah so i knew that wasn't true and then i so then i texted the producers and I was like, so, okay, I get it. They're not going to run the, the radar. Can I talk about it on my segment tomorrow? Because I would tape every Thursday morning and then they would run it on Saturdays. And the producer goes, check your email. And I checked my email and I got an email that said, hi, Katie, we're not going to be needing you uh, to do your segment tomorrow morning. Please feel free to submit any unpaid invoices. Uh, best of luck. God, that's like, yeah, I was yeah. shocked. And uh, yeah. something I want to point out is that and clarify is that a lot of people are like some people who are supportive, but some people who think they're being speaking truth to power and like they're owning me or something, you know, owning a lib or something. They're like, well, obviously, Katie did this because she'd uh, she for attention, because yeah. obviously the Hill is a centrist corporate. But no, I had spoken about Israel several times. I did a, a segment as a guest about Israel shuttering all those human rights organizations, literally welding the doors closed. I did a segment about Israel bombing a cemetery where children were playing, where they were visiting their grandfather's grave. I did a segment about Israel 
uh, lying about murdering Shireen Abu Akhle. There was no indication that this was something that would get me censored or fired, um, but it did. The thing about it is, was this government, our government, gives Israel about six billion dollars a year now, um, and the drumbeat of dead Palestinians continues. Uh, Forty-five children have been killed by Israeli uh, occupation forces. I mean, I've been there. Like you know, the the when you're in these Palestinian villages, the the Israelis have been very good about very smart, very capable, very competent in how they conduct their occupation. They have terrorized every village in Palestine, every city in Palestine, every family you talk to, they are terrified that their children are going to be abducted because what the Israeli forces do, uh, Israeli border police or the Israeli army will do is they will come in and take the children in the middle of the night. Now you get your, now sometimes you get your kids back, other times you don't. I mean, it, it is, this is, we could spend the whole time talking about that, but just to get to the point of just $6 billion to prop up occupation forces that do this terrorize deliberately and strategically families into submission. And on the other side, what you did, having a monologue, a, a, you know, a, wanting to open up a discussion about the fact that Israel has been identified as an apartheid state, not by Matt Ho or Katie Halper or, or Rose Roby, you know, I mean, it, but by, and because you went to great lengths in your monologue to lay out all the sources right this person said it this organization said it and to give a degree of credibility to it that you have to for this particular conversation and so the nauseating thing to me is that this won't be the 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 desire to keep it hidden right and then to punish you and make you an example out of you so that others don't dare speak about this uh you know um what what's been the, the the kind of the reception from not from you know your fellow uh uh your, your fellow travelers on the left or in independent media but have you gotten anything from corporate media have, have people reached out at all from you know any place outside of kind of like the independent alternate left media uh, spectrum Jonathan Fugelsang, who I really am grateful to, who has a show on Sirius XM, actually had me on last night. That's about the most mainstream mm. um, I've gotten. Um, of course, none of the kind of right wing cancel culture warriors have said anything about it. Nothing from Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson, both of whom are in Israel now. Uh, nothing from Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro, Barry Weiss. And Barry Weiss, of course, cut her teeth trying to get her own right. Palestinian professor, Joseph Massad, fired from Columbia. Um, so, no. I mean, I have, it's interesting. I actually just got today, someone joined my Patreon. They saw me on Crystal, Kyle, and Friends. And um, he's someone I went to college with. And he was like, I don't know where I stand in Israel, but I really admire you to sticking to your, you know, your convictions. So, it is interesting. And I have, there are some people who are like, I disagree with you on this, but it's terrible what they did. So there is some, there are some people who don't share my exact analysis even of Israel Palestine who still think that what the Hill did was really like disturbing. But I have been getting a lot of support and I should also point out how lucky I am because this is not my only gig. I mean, again, I really encourage people to support youtube.com slash the Katie Halper show. Just subscribe, just like the videos. It's a free way to support it. Um, but, uh, this is not my only gig. I have the Katie Helper show. I have useful idiots. There are people who have lost their livelihoods over this. Right. Stephen Salida, is, who is a professor, was fired. He's now driving a bus. Um, and of course, um, you know, you have a lot of academics uh, or commentators. Mark Lamont Hill was fired by CNN. Uh, Juan Cole was had a job offer, basically fall through from Yale over his criticism of Israel. Abby Martin was not allowed to speak at Georgia because she refused right. to sign a basically a loyalty oath saying that she wouldn't um, promote, engage in, say anything good about boycott, Sabbath, sanction, BDS. Um, also, of course, you know, Palestinian journal, oh, Cornell West, yeah, I'm seeing in the comments. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. And then but Palestinian Harvard, journalists. Yeah obviously lose their lives covering this. I mean, Shireen Abu Akleh is just one recent example, but there's there's so many more. And Israel, we saw with the March of Return, Israel was just targeting the press, targeting mega, me, uh, medics. Um, yeah. So, of course, uh, it's... 
uh, it's very upsetting, but again, I have it a lot better than other people. And I'm really grateful for all the support I've gotten. I'm very frustrated that I'm going to, that I've lost this more mainstream, um, and very large audience that I had at the Hill. The good thing is I've kind of forgot about this part. The good news is that I reached out to when I thought that it, maybe they weren't going to release it, I started reaching out to Breakthrough News and my friend, Rania Kalik. Rania's is great. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. And I showed her the script. I was like, I may want to shoot this with you guys. I showed her the script. She loved it. The br- director of Breakthrough News loved it. And as soon as The Hill told me that they were, because um, even if The Hill had not fired me, but if they were, um, if they just weren't going to run the monologue, Because, I mean, maybe I was willing to stay there and not because I was happy about some kind of compromise. It would still have been very problematic if they didn't let me do op-eds. But I was willing to stay there and do segments on it precisely because no one else talks about this stuff. So I really wanted my voice to to get out there. But then, um, and so once it was clear that they weren't going to do the radar um, and I was like, okay, let's let's film this. And so they told me they weren't going to do the radar Wednesday. They fired me Wednesday evening and Thursday morning. We shot the video. So you can actually see the video at youtube.com slash the Katie Helper Show or youtube.com slash Breakthrough News. And big shout out to Breakthrough News and to Rania Kalik. Um, and so that video did get out there and it has gotten over 100,000 views, which is great. But um, I am, you know, I'm sad that I'm sad and uh, uh uh disappointed dismayed frustrated about not having the reach that i used to have because i really wanted to get that message out to a less radicalized audience that was one of the strengths of rising is that it reached a very mainstream audience